This is a sermon from St. Paul's Church, Brookfield, Connecticut, transforming lives through Jesus. For more information, go to www.stpaulsbrookfield.com. God's love is the most powerful force in the universe. And it is revealed uniquely in Jesus, choosing the power of love over the love of power. He speaks to every age. He speaks to us this morning through his presence in the power of the Holy Spirit. As the crowd saw Jesus enter the city, the words of the ancient prophet Zephaniah would be before them, who said this, Shout, daughter, Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Now, in the first century, kings didn't ride donkeys. They rode on mighty steeds or chariots. Yet, Israel's Messiah was the only king who expected to turn up on the back of a donkey. On Palm Sunday, prophecy was fulfilled. As everything Jesus did during his ministry involved the literal fulfillment of one prophecy after another. As the Messiah, the anointed one of God, he made the lame walk, the blind see, the deaf hear, the dumb speak, the dead rise. He fed 4,000 people on a few loaves and a couple of fish, and then repeated it for 5,000. Nobody in Jerusalem, not even Pontius Pilate, was ignorant of who Jesus was. But the enthusiastic welcome notwithstanding, a mere five days later, nearly everybody wanted him dead. They wanted the love of power. He came with the power of love. Now, there are over 425, let me repeat that, 425 prophecies from the Old Testament that Jesus perfectly fulfilled, 28 of which occurred on the day of his crucifixion. Take, for instance, Psalm 22, the psalm he offered in his agony up on the cross. It describes a crucifixion. What is staggering is that this was written 1,000 years before Christ was crucified, and 600 years before crucifixion was even invented by the Romans. Contained within this prophecy was the fact that the Messiah would not have any bones broken, and that would be fulfilled in John 19.33. That his hands and feet would be pierced, and that would be fulfilled in Luke 25.33 and John 20.25. And that people would gamble for his clothes, Fulfilled in Matthew 27, 35. The scriptures prophetically tell us that even before the Messiah was crucified, he would be scourged. This is exactly what Isaiah meant when he said in Isaiah 53, 5, With his stripes we are healed. It was fulfilled in John 19, 1, which says, Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. Many of us wear crosses. We have vision crosses. And we're able to wear a cross out front for him because Jesus first wore it on his back for us. Via Dolorosa means in Latin, the way of suffering. It's a location we can walk today in Jerusalem, tracing our Lord's footsteps through the city as he bore his cross all the way to Calvary. And whether we are in Jerusalem or Brookfield, today we all walk our own Via Dolorosa, our way of suffering. But the difference is that we deserve it. Jesus did not. For as they said about him, surely this man was innocent. We are culpable. We bear the mark of sin, alienation from God. And we suffer as a result. And whatever difficulties we face pale in comparison 
to what he endured for our salvation and reconciling us to God, our Father, and the power of the Spirit. We all experience suffering. There's no escaping it. It's our human condition of sin. Nevertheless, did you know that Jesus cares about your pain as if you were the only person going through such a journey? Just as he would have died for you if you were the only human being on the face of this earth, he sees your pain uniquely. Now, there are two ways we can go through this life of suffering, with Jesus or without Jesus. If we go it alone, our inevitable suffering has no purpose or meaning, and we are dead in our sins with no hope. As we take up our cross and follow Jesus, our suffering becomes redemptive. Redemptive. And that brings us to God while elevating us spiritually beyond our circumstances. Where we are invited to participate in seeing God work all things for good, even suffering. To take up our cross is to participate in God making all things new through Jesus. This is what St. Paul meant when he wrote, I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. As we take up our cross and follow Jesus, it is bearable because he bears it for us. I invite us now to consider our own Via Dolorosa, our path of suffering. Whatever it may be. May I invite you to close your eyes for a moment with me? Look at where you are in the road of your life. Consider your troubles, your struggles, and yes, your joy and your hopes and your dreams. Have you been going it alone for too long? Now look at Jesus bearing his cross right in the middle of your life. See him inviting you to take up your cross. That sign that you are repenting for your sins. And now, Put your cross onto him as he carries it for you. Allow his words to come over you. Come to me, you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. With hands now free of your own cross, put your hand in his and begin to walk with him again. ask you to be present for your Holy Spirit right now, as you are, to lead us in that inner journey of walking with you, which is to walk with God. And today, and all this Holy Week, and every day for that matter, we will walk with Christ. And I ask you to attend one worship service between today and Easter, to be part of this walk to be with Jesus in a special way. Because to walk with Jesus is to experience the power of love over the love of power. And it is this love, the most powerful force in the universe that bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Trust in Jesus. And on this road of faith, you will never, ever walk alone again.
Let us pray. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. 